Well, the first day of polling, honey. Uh, I got some guys back in the honey house cleaning the place up, getting the, um, the equipment ready to go. Uh, I brought a bunch of guys out to the yard and we're just stripping boxes. So uh, it's pretty quick work. I'm just going to show you what to do. I just kind of caught up in my uh, job here in the yard. So I'll just briefly show you what we're doing. All these boxes now have been cleared. The bees are now down into the bottom, filling those empties back up with nectar. And these tops are free of bees. Stacks up, and then just simply put, you slide them on to the right. pallets on the truck. Here. <laughs> You can see all the bees have moved down. They're all underneath the screen. They can't get back up through the cones. I'll get Cameron to open up the top and I'll show you the bees working on the cones. girls are preparing the comb right now. We moved all the way up to the top already and they're bringing in fresh nectar. So this frame is half full of fresh nectar already. So that's three boxes they're working on all at once. So I'm rushing the, uh, the escapes uh, by about a day just because I want to get the honey house going but it appears the bees are in heavy enough flow that they're clearing quite nicely. There isn't whole lot in these boxes. Pretty much full. Here's my hot room. I have roughly I a couple thousand boxes ready here to extract. Should keep the crew busy this week. You can see my window is full of bees. So these boxes have cleared out quite nice. So we have another week of polling first round and we're on to second poll um, the following week into August. So this will keep the crew busy this week. One semi out, another half semi sitting waiting to be loaded. I have some custom work here. Small guy has got me, I don't know how many boxes here. You know, 25 or 30 boxes to extract for them and my empties over here which will be going out tomorrow so these will go back out hopefully to catch a little bit more flow we'll see in the meantime this is what my hot room looks like Cooks and Beals wax spinner. Um, I have a heat exchanger. I need to pump through at 90 degrees to warm it up. So then it goes into my spinner, which is basically a centrifuge. The spinning, the slurry comes in, gets pulled against the drum, and it forms a layer of honey from the density. It's layer of honey, and the wax actually floats inside the spinning drum. There's a spinning knife which cuts the wax within the spinning drum and drops it down into a pan below. So as the density separates, the honey then channels out through baffles which gets thrown against the edge and down into the sump. Drop it down to the sump when this fills up. It triggers the float, which runs my Viking pumps. These need to be replaced, but they're, uh, they're my standbys. I have two pumps because this is in the corner. Just in case one pump fails on me, I always have one pump going so I don't have any spills. And it goes up into my uh, honey tank. We'll fill this up twice a day. My nice bee made drums. Just about 
see the honey is pretty clear. The, uh, the spinner does a fantastic job separating out the wax and all the impurities. It can make a pretty clean product to be sent off to be made. I'll do another video because that music in the last one. Supposed to be lifting box. First to there. Lower. 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 I just want to show you inside the extracting room after the crew is gone. Uh, before they leave at 5, we have them scrape the floors, scrape down the machinery, just get rid of all the wax, tidy the place up. And then Terry does a full wash down on the equipment with hot water. The extractor, the change, all the propolis gets blasted off. 
and cleaned right up. The uh, covers are put on the sumps and on the extractor. We don't wash inside the, the, the sumps or the extractor or inside the spinner or the tank. Everything is sealed off. So we only wash the exterior of the machinery any, anywhere that's exposed to uh, filth and grime. And it's all done with hot water, so it kept up every day. It makes it a little easier to clean. And then the place is brand new. It's very important to have proper ventilation. If your ventilation fan is turned off right now, so I could take this little video uh, just to make sure this humid air gets outside. So it's a big job, but this is what we do every day after every extraction day. It's very important to keep the place clean because we are per producing a product that practically goes straight onto the shelf. Sunday afternoon wax chores. Carrie's come in to empty the, the wax melter, which is a chore. She's filling up our, uh, our trays. And I am gonna tackle the spinner. Every Sunday I clean up the spinner, I pull the drum, and I chip the wax away from the inside. I like to clean the spinner out once a week just to help with the granulation issue inside and I know the spinner is running properly when I'm cutting out only about an inch layer of wax. I like to cut it to about three quarter inch while it's running so I don't have a lot of wax running on the inside. You can see the honey is pretty dry so I'm getting some drips. The canola honey will run pretty dry granulate and it'll, it'll plug up these baffles so I like to clean this spinner out at least once a week every Sunday. This is coming out quite easy. So I have the drum all scraped out and what I want to show you is the reason why I clean it out every week. As you can see along the edge of the baffle, there's all that granulated honey. And canola is particularly bad for granulating, especially when you spin it. And it's that granulated honey along the edge of that baffle, which doesn't allow the honey to exit the spinner uh, freely. So that is why I have to clean this out every week 
just to keep the honey flowing uh, nice and smoothly. So the drum's all nicely cleaned out now. The stainless steel is a real neat trick. This is what the inside of the spinner looks like. Uh, nice and clean honey on the outside here. You see a little bit of granulation because of that cursed canola, but the center is just littered with wax. This is a very messy machine. It does a very efficient job, but the messiness drives me bonkers. But anyways, here's the water port, which, which uh, cools a knife. Here's the knives here. And as this drum rotates, these knives spin. This will cut this floating layer of wax off on the inside of the spinning drum. You see. A very efficient way of handling our wax problem. Very messy way of handling our wax problem. But this is probably my favorite machine of the whole honey house. Just because of the time it saves me every day. It cleans the honey out perfectly and gives me practically wood shaving type wax at the end of the day. So I lose very little honey and that's what it's all about. So in about an hour, I have the drum pulled and I have the entire area here cleaned up back the way I like it and ready for the next week. So we had a nice little rain last night. And what I noticed today, I'm just stripping off boxes. I noticed earlier that the flow had really slowed down. The bees weren't filling the comb up as quick. As we can see, I don't know if you can see that, but that's a frame of fresh nectar. So we're back in the flow. Packed. It's like uh, 300 pounds in the stack. Good. 
These in a honey house are a real pain in the ass. Uh, no matter how much work we do, we seem to be we seem to bring bees within the facility. So we what we try to do is um, we like to trap them and put them back outside so they're not bothering the crew. Um, the real simple way of doing that is with windows. So the windows kind of the natural light attracts the bees to the window and six the bees will stick to the window and then cluster on top. And I'll show you. I've, I've tried to build traps and escapes and such to let the bees naturally leave the facility, but I've rested on um, having to do it manually. Just sweeping the bees off the window seems to be the most, the easiest and the most convenient way of getting the bees outside. So it's not a production day today, but there's just a few uh, stragglers that are collecting on the corner. And what will happen, the bees will hit the window and then they'll come up and they'll gather up in the corner here. So what I do is this window, we just simply, it uh, conveniently folds back like this. And all I do is I just sweep the bees off the window outside. And then I have uh, these catch hives uh, to catch all the strays. Uh, from time to time we bring, from time to time we bring queens in into the extractory facility and uh, we'll find them, we'll gather up the brood and we'll reinstate them within the ne their nest outside. So they catch all the drift bees, I'll take them back out to the, uh, the bee yards to, uh, to continue on their work for me. So in the hot room, <coughs> it gets a little more wild in here uh, by using a skateboards like I've shown you, I bring in, you know, stragglers within the boxes I can't get them all out so they're about 95% clear so there's still always a few bees left in these boxes so I brought these in yesterday and as you can see for the most part they're nice and clear so these boxes here have sat for two days and then you have these boxes over here that were brought in just yesterday so they have a few more bees not bad and these stragglers within the boxes what I have is I have three windows one on each side of the of the hot room and the window uh, attracts the bees like a magnet but I want to show you a hive here that a queen has remained inside and what has happened just gonna find her there she is there right in the center there um, the bees won't leave the box if the queen's in there. They'll just kind of hang on and linger. That's a pain in the ass for the staff because they have to deal with bees. So what we try to do is just separate those out and I'll deal with them in the evening. I'll show you another one here. Here's just some drift bees on that, but there's that hive right there. Here's a second one that we've missed. So we'll just pull those out and I'll deal with them at the end of the day. I'll go down, remove the brood, find the queen, and reestablish her into a nest. So this is roughly the drift off of, uh, there's 1,200 boxes here and then they've done 600. So roughly 1,800 boxes that we've brought in. So it's not too bad. We always bring in a little bit of drift bees with the boxes, just the way it is. So that's why we have these windows set up. So basically every day, usually at the end of the day, after the crew's gone, I do my bee chores. So I come and I just sweep up the bees off the window and I take them outside. I'll probably take these bees to a yard, um, which could take, uh, you know, a boost with some shook bees and I'll uh, isolate it just to one yard. And the reason is because within my whole apiary, if I have, let's say one yard that's sick or something, um, I'm not taking the bees from that yard and spreading them out uh, within the whole apiary, shaking bees in front of the whole apiary. I'm just taking these bees and consolidating them into one yard. So I'm um, isolating those bees from the whole apiary into the one yard. Just a little bit of a biosecurity uh, step that I take and it allows me to use these bees to put them back to work to uh, boost up the hives and uh, so I don't waste them. We work so hard to build these bees I like to be able to take them and utilize them because a mass of bees like that is potential so if we can you know, this is in a way scraps. We're in the honey flow now. We got our hives are 
full of bees. Just we're just boiling over bees. We have surplus bees right now. Sometimes you look at this, and you're like, ah, oh, just you know, toss them to the side, just whatever. But take these bees and use them because these bees are very motivated to work. They want to. They you put them into a hive with a, a virgin queen, and these these bees will outperform a lot of anything else that's uh, within your apiary just because they're lost. They have no home. Uh, you put them into a, a hive with a, with a virgin queen. It kind of reinstates their purpose. And they all work overtime to get that nest going and to get something going for winter. So you just kind of got to exploit that spirit a little bit. It's kind of like a swarm in a way. Of all the methods of removing the bees from the hot room, i found the easiest, simplest way is to use a bucket and a brush. not the nicest job in the world. You simply just sweep the bees off into a bucket. I also have this old vacuum I'll show you later. I don't have it going right now, but I'll come in. It's an old shop vac that's lost its suction, but it does a great job vacuuming bees up. So that's what I use to gather the bees off the walls and off the windows when I get tired of Sweeping these. Okay, well, I just took care of a mass of these on this window and I'll take them outside. And I'll shake them in front of my catch hive. And this catch hive is full of foundation, so I can put a, a lot of bees into this into this hive, take it out to my yard that I want to shake in front of hives to boost. They'll all go inside that hive. There's a frame of brood in there. They'll smell the brood and they'll stick to that hive. And once a week or twice a week, I'll take that hive out to my, uh, somewhere in my apiary to bulk them up.